Um, thank you all for coming. I'd like to um, like to thank the organizers for going out of their way to create this panel, this luncheon, um, in the face of some odds, the conference having been canceled, of course. <clears throat> and I'd um, especially like to begin by apologizing for a rather sudden change in the program, uh, consequent upon a rather dramatic development in Geneva yesterday. I originally intended to transmit today an upbeat report on some new technologies that affect agribusiness in a global sense. Instead, I find myself the messenger of some rather disturbing news. Um, the WTO will be issuing a public statement in detail by the end of the week, but the die has been cast. As of September 2002, having seen the effects of policies whose only intent was to bring greater prosperity and peace, the World Trade Organization, in its present form, will cease to exist. Over the next two years, we of the WTO will endeavor to refound our organization along different lines, based in a different understanding of the purposes of world trade. The new organization will have as its foundation and basis the United Nations uh, Universal Declaration of Human Rights, upon which we feel uh, we, can, we can make a good uh, foundation to ensuring that the organization will have human rather than business interests as its bottom line. Uh, my reaction was one of total surprise. We're expecting a speech uh, more based on what the World Trade Organization does and its relation to Australian trade. It sort of blew me out of the water when the, uh, the announcement was made that the World Trade Organization is significantly reinventing itself to focus on issues relating to um, people as opposed to uh, economics, something that hopefully could be of significant benefit to uh, the poor and needy in, in throughout the world in all the developing countries. The UN estimates that poor countries, the poorest countries in the world, lose approximately two billion dollars a day because of unjust trade rules, uh, many of them instituted by our own organization. And this is 14 times the amount that they receive in aid from developed countries. I thought the speech itself was, um, was, was compelling in terms of, of its information. It's, it was ast I was astounded to find that they're actually going to dismantle the WTO. I was also amazed to see that um, there was an admission that perhaps it had failed. Um, it's going to have a huge effect on, on international business and particularly for us as an organisation, I feel. Um, the hardest thing I find will be the, um, the balance that, let's say, the US, EU and Japan in terms of being major um, components of the world economy, the effect you know, will they really change in terms of this new organisation and will there actually be genuine change and perhaps a benefit you know, to the world's poorest countries? I, I must admit I'm a cynic with regards to that occurring. Uh, liberalisation, the process of liberalisation, often enables the knowledge of the poor to be converted into the property of global corporations. Specific statistics are rather shocking. Out of 26,000 patents, um, applied for in Africa in 2000 and 2001, only 31 were from residents of Africa. The rest were from residents of first world countries. 31 out of 26,000 patent applications. Uh, it wasn't what I was expecting. <laughs> I was expecting something on agribusiness and what the World Trade Organization does, but I'd have to say I believe it's fairly positive. Um, because I think that, uh, this, uh, as the gentleman said, the strong are getting stronger and the, and the weak are getting weaker. And you can't let that keep on going. And uh, even we notice it here in Australia where some of the trade uh, arrangements that are made, if you're powerful, you can get whatever you like, and if you're not, you can't. And it's just the world with the population we've got can't keep going that way. So I think it was fairly positive and I think it's a very brave decision by an organisation to admit that they've been going down the wrong track and dissolve themselves and start to look for something different and I think it's, it's fantastic. Yeah. Disparity is, is growing between rich and poor. The richest fifth have 80% of the world's income and the poorest fifth have 1%. Um, this gap, we, we all know this figure but we don't always remember that the, the, this gap has actually doubled since 1960. Uh, more and more thinkers are therefore noting uh, that there is no evidence that liberalization favors growth or benefits the poor. 
I think we're all generally aware of increases in poverty and, and low living standards and issues faced by developing countries. And uh, what Mr Spratt, I think, had to say today really gives a, a terrific sign of hope for what I think we all aspire to, and that's a global uh, economy that benefits uh, all people. Now, after protracted and detailed review of 